Well, let's bring in Green Senator and Defence Spokesman for the Greens, David Shoebridge. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, Andy. So the National Reconstruction Fund, the deal's been done. Senior government people do say to me the fund was never intended to be used for coal or gas anyhow. So well, is this a real victory? Um, I've never yet seen a pool of public funds that the fossil industry hasn't wanted to siphon off for its own purpose. We've seen previous funds established in former governments uh, and, and being used to fund things such as the Beetaloo Basin um, uh, gas project. Uh, we've seen previous national reconstruction funds being used to, to fund key infrastructure for fossil fuel projects. Um, so remember, we're making this fund not just for the current government, but for any future government at all. And I think it's, it's good to see in black and white in legislation that this fund cannot be used for fossil fuel, coal and gas projects. All right. Where's the safeguards mechanism bill at? Because they're never going to say no more coal or gas. I mean, you've got the PM in India talking about coal exports. Yeah. So what, what else do you want if you can't get that? I appreciate this is your starting position. The leader said it was an offer, not an ultimatum, Adam Baird. What else well, are you after? Well, we're very clear that the safeguard mechanism, if it's going to work, if it's going to deliver on even the government's promises, modest promises that they are, can't permit new coal and gas projects to be opened. And uh, we've seen recent surveys, um, uh, the most recent one in the ACT, showing overwhelming support amongst the public to keep coal and gas in the ground and for no new coal and but gas. But if you stick to that position, it will never pass. They won't do it. Well, I think there were many people saying we wouldn't get an express prohibition on the National Reconstruction I think budget. it's a different proposition. Well, clearly, clearly they are different propositions, but the argument is the same. If we're setting up, through this parliament, key legislation, whether it's for reconstruction or if it's for climate, having as part of that a commitment to no new coal and gas is something we have been very clear about. Now, we've also said to the government that if we can achieve the same outcome through other measures, um, that we're open to achieving that. And we've actually seen some, some, some creative thinking coming from across the, um, the climate sector in the last few weeks. Um, we've said to the government we would look at the essential things such as a climate trigger in the EPBC Act and other measures that achieve the same outcome. And what I think is good news, though, today is we've seen in black and white this parliament passing a very clear statement about not using public funds to, fall, to, to, to fund new coal gas. All right. Why do, why do the Greens seem to fail to acknowledge that there needs to be gas at least as a transition, even for the most enthusiastic renewable energy advocate? Well, there's plenty of modelling that shows if we have a properly distributed, well-funded, um, in part publicly owned renewable en energy industry, with pumped hydro and battery storage and we distribute the wind and the solar assets across that we don't have to have any kind of permanent commitment to gas. Um, there is a... So there are bucket loads. There are bucket loads of gas projects already approved, pumping out gas, most of which is going to export. We don't need any new gas to meet the short-term transitional needs for our own electricity All right, market. well, perhaps something they could do for a compromise is put some more money into renewable energies. Well, as I, as I think Adam has said repeatedly, we are open to creative ways of getting to the same, pro the same goal of keeping coal and gas in the ground. Negotiations are continuing. We've just seen good faith negotiations produce a good outcome on the National Reconstruction Fund. Um, I'm hopeful we'll All continue. Right. What about this report today that your leader, Adam Bant, super fund as fossil fuel interests? Well, look, I, I, I haven't seen the details of that report. Um, I think many of us have industry funds and we, we expect them to have an ethical investment strategy. Um, I'm sure um, everybody um, would like to see their superannuation fund have an ethical climate, um, everybody in the Greens at least, ethical climate um, positive investment scheme. I don't know the details, but um, I think when you have when you invest in an industry fund, you are expecting it to have an ethical okay. investment framework. Now, just finally, your defence spokesman, as I said, for the Greens, what do you make of these, these leaks about the, the AUKUS announcement? Well, first of all, it's extraordinary the way these leaks are coming. They're coming from the industry, the, the, the nuclear subs industry, the, the weapons industry in the United States and the UK. 
they are obviously, those industries are hungry to get access to billions and billions of dollars of Australian taxpayers. And they've been fighting amongst themselves to see how much of our money they can get. Um, and, and, and it probably is a statement of just how oppressive Australia's secrecy laws are, that there's been no similar leak from the Australian perspective. But this, I think, is to be expected. We've got major multinationals um, um, trying to get their hands on billions and billions of dollars of public money, and they're now out in the media positioning their self-interest. And, you know, we're talking about a project that is likely to cost some $200 billion of public money. And, and there's a feeding frenzy on at the moment. And that's I assume the Greens oppose it? Yeah, I mean, well, this will surprise you, Andrew. We, suppose, we oppose nuclear-powered um, submarines, A, for the obscene cost, but B, because it is, it is fostering this kind of rhetoric we've seen in other outlets about some inevitable conflict with China and this inevitable drumbeat of war. It's very dangerous, actually, what we've seen in some of the public commentary of late. David Shubridge, thanks for your time. Excuse me.